Hi, friends. I'm re-releasing this talk today in honor of my friend, Louis Anderson. Uh, this was the first time we talked, and he was on the show a second time after this, and we really became friends, uh, genuinely. And uh, he was an extraordinary human being. He had an enormous heart, and of course, he made me laugh a lot. What a human being. He will be missed, and uh, this is just one of my favorite talks ever, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. That's it. That's not that she's a familiar person I've seen, you know, at Walmart or something, which is where she yeah. definitely- Costco. 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 Come of on. course, Costco. Why no, did I, I say Walmart? I can't believe it. I can't oh, believe it. I cannot believe I said that. No, I don't. I'm, I'm teasing you. I go to Martha I use would be Walmart all the time. I like, uh, I like, Martha, for God's sakes. Anyway, I'm on Really Famous. It's a podcast. Chip, I'm finally really famous, Chip. You're not. Anyway. Okay, if you watch the FX TV series Baskets, you are cracking up right now from that clip. If you don't, maybe you should give it a try. It's so good. So it's Louis Anderson, the comedian, the actor, my dream guest. Well, let me explain. Louis Anderson moves me. Seriously, when I watch him play Christine Baskets on the show Baskets, I literally put my hand to my heart. The humanity he conveys is almost too much. It's really beautiful. And he also moves me to tears of joy and laughter. He's so funny and it shows as we get to know each other today here on the podcast. So for that backstory, last summer, I shared a video clip on Instagram of my dream guests. Louis, of course, was on my list and he saw my video and he said, I'd love to be on your show. Long story short, it took a year, but finally we booked it. And all I can tell you is this, I knew it. I knew he'd be a dream guest. Anyway, you can totally see that video, my dream guests video. And in fact, if you think you know who would be on my list, before you watch, send me a quick email with your guesses. I'd love to know who you think I'm dreaming about. Really famous podcast at gmail.com. To see the video, just go to Instagram. I put a link to that in the show notes below. You can pick up Louie's memoir called Hey Mom, which we refer to throughout this talk, but there's actually so much more that we don't get into about his family and his life. So you can pick it up and uh, learn even more about Louie. And again, if you'd like to catch Baskets with Zach Galifianakis, who also co-created the show, it's on Hulu right now. It's just so good, funny and poignant, and at times a little ridiculous, but really sublime. Oh, and you'll hear us talking about my really famous mug. I mailed one to Louie, and I also sent one to my last guest, Talia Shire. So I think that may be a thing from now on. And if you'd like one too, let me know. I already have regular merch on my website. So t-shirts, bandanas for your dog, and hats, and that sort of thing. But I think that the mugs have been sold out for a bit now. So I'm making my premium mugs available to anyone who wants one. They're big and glossy with a logo on each side. And they're the same ones that I use with my guests on stage at live shows. And just for fun, if you get a mug and you send me a photo of yourself with the mug, I'll share it on my social media. I'm calling the photos mug shots. So if you'd like a premium mug, visit reallyfamouspodcast.com slash mug shots. And I'll send one to you directly. That's reallyfamouspodcast.com slash mug shots. And now Louie Anderson and me, finally. See you at the, oh, hello? I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. All right. How's there this? Does this look good? Yeah. Perfect. All right, good. All right, this good. This looks great. Uh, you sound good. You look good. I'm Thank happy to have okay. you on my computer here. I'm excited about your podcast. You've been so nice to me, and uh, I, do, I don't 
uh, I can't refuse that. I appreciate that. I just it's, you just love celebrities. I think or somebody. It's not just celebrities. It's <laughs> somebody personal. I don't just want anybody on my show. That's why I asked you to come on it. You're so sweet. I see something in somebody and I'm interested in getting to know who they are for real. So that's you know, my approach. I think it's a great approach. And I listened to a few of the podcasts and uh, it's evident that you care about people and uh, humanity and all those great things. And you're, uh, people like you automatically and uh, you're very sincere and you should listen to uh, Kara and me on uh, the podcast. It's, uh, what's it, super famous? No, mostly famous? No. Uh, very famous? Super famous? You should have a contest that people, so you can, you could uh, brand the um, really famous. Am well, I you want to know why it's, why it's really famous? Yeah, I know. There's a reason. It's not, it couldn't be super famous. It has to okay. be really famous because... I'm interested in the real person. Oh, I love that. So, you know, obviously you're famous. My other no. guests are famous. But to me, I want another real human being. So it's got to be really famous. All right. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. I love the dress. You know, ever since I played a woman, I look at all women's clothing a lot more like like it's that that fits you so well, not just physically, but your mood and who you are and your coloring and all that stuff. Thank you. And don't you kind of think that when you're wearing something, it also affects your mood? Absolutely. That's why I put this jacket on because I really love this jacket and I love the, the turtles, the mutant turtles. The oh, ninjas. I didn't even see that. Yeah. It's, it's a ninja, ninja turtle. turtle. So yeah, now I ninja. see. And so, you know, I, what makes you happy and blue is, you know, a good, good, conduit so is pink blue and pink are uh humanity love colors i call them i agree and look my logo is blue so here are the yeah. blues that i chose yeah. for my logo oh, you know i have a cup collection so you do i do i'd love to put you right up there with uh you know regis and kelly and uh <laughs> kelly and uh, how, uh michael and kelly and um uh, what's the next? What's uh, Ryan, is it? Ryan, Kelly yeah. and Ryan. I have all the Kelly, uh, and I even think I have a Regis and Kathy mug. I've always loved mugs. I drink coffee. I have a Maui Gyms, a Maui Invitational. It's a basketball. I play, spent a lot of time in Maui in my life. Excuse me, I'll take a little sip. Yeah, please do. Um, cheers to that. So cheers, uh, cheers to you and cheers to let me get my get my yeah. mug up here. Cheers. Cheers to really famous. And cheers to Louis Anderson. And cheers and Maui. To, yeah, and Kara Mayer, right? Is it Mayer? It's Mayer, exactly. Yeah. Miss so, always Meyer, right? With people. Always. And when yeah. I, you know, I, not so much anymore, but when I was yeah. growing up, it was always Kara. And I really pronounce it Kara because Kara. You know, Did I say I'm Kara? Like, no. I said Kara, but, right? Yeah, you said Kara. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of times, you know, people are, you know, names. I always tell people when you're going to name your baby, make sure it isn't a burden. Yours is good, but you're right. They, if, if there's any doubt in it, that's why I kind of like the names that are phonetically spelled so that, right. you know, it's like Lee, Ka, or, you know what I mean? You hear those names and you go, perfect. You, you said what you wanted to say. Exactly. So Louie is very clear. It's very easy to know. Yeah. So your My parents dad's name, by the way. So I did. I read your book too, but like oh. a year ago, I read it. Oh wow! Wow. Is that when you? Is that when you wrote it? Is that when? It came yeah, out yeah. I think it's a. It's been about a year because the paperback, uh, "Hey Mom," just came out with a different cover, which I'm really excited about because it's uh, the front of a refrigerator with magnets and. Uh, pictures and notes to my mom and that. And so I really love uh, changing it around. Um, I love that book. Um, I just did, I just got a, a bunch of audios. I'd really love you, you to hear it on audio. So you send me a mug. I send you the book. You got it. Deal. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. So 
as yeah. you know, right? So I was reading the book. You probably didn't know this one because I know that you saw that I tagged you in a in an Instagram post like a year ago, and then probably again recently. Yes, again recently. Um, but I remember being at Barnes and Noble one day when I was picking up the book. And I was like, I've got, I did a post with me and the cover of your book saying, I just feel like I really want to get to know Louie Anderson. Who can help me? I think I did see that post. Didn't did I you? respond to it? Maybe I, I saw it. So. I don't I, think I saw think that I one. Did. Oh, okay. Well, repost it now. Well, here's the one. I'll I have to send you it. now the new book cover and you can repost that one. I happily will. So the one that you responded to was last summer. I made a little video clip of my dream guests and I included right. you in it. That you, was so sweet. So I was like, I'm Louie Anderson, you know, baskets. And yeah. you responded to that. And I was like, amazing. So happy. And you and were so patient with me to get on your show. I appreciate that. Cause I know, you know, um, I know that people, you know, I'm not a aficionado on, on, um, on, on uh, social media, but I do like, um, I have been better about following up with people who personally uh, direct message me. And so you were very persistent and you're just welcoming. You're a welcoming person. I didn't want to be a stalker though. I was like, it's a fine line between letting you know I really, really do appreciate you. I don't you. think there's anything stalker about you. So yeah, I think you can relax okay. on that. Okay. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. So, yeah. but I'm thrilled that a year later, here we are. And uh, I think I also heard you on Mark Marin's podcast. You did his oh, show yeah. too, right? I love Mark. That was a good one too. Yeah. And yeah, I, I told him yeah. he should be nice to his mother. That's right. Do you remember that? That's right. I mean, it was out of line in one sense. He was complaining about his mom, and I go, Jesus, I you're good. You're I'd give anything to com be having my mom bug me right now yeah you know, you know why, i don't why? think that's out of line i think that's no it wasn't line. i knew mark i know mark forever and he's a lovely person and um i'm so proud of him with glow and everything he's done and and he really is responsible for us having this conversation in a lot of ways how so i mean well he kind of pioneered the podcast he really did. I mean, people don't maybe give him credit for it, but That's true. he he pioneered it. I went over to his place. He's, has a, he used to have a place, and I think it was Echo Park or something, and it was really hard for a guy my size to get into it. It was like in the garage. It was downstairs. I don't know where it was. It was in back. And then he, uh, he's got a new setup. It's very nice. And, you know, he is a real person, too. That's why he is. That's yeah. why people love him on the podcast. Yeah. It's my favorite podcast. Is his? He, oh, his good. is the one that I religiously listen to. That's good. Well, I have to have you on my podcast. We should just put this recording. If you send me the recording, I'll just release it on my podcast for you. If it'll help you. Of course, I would love that. That would be yeah, amazing. It'd be fun, right? Yeah, I will send it to you. I, I've Here, always thought that people. That's how these should work. If I'm going to do your podcast, right. you should, I should be able to take what you did, but also maybe what we'll do at some point is before we finish it, not today, but maybe I'll just do a new a, a chunk about you. I'll actually interview you about your podcast and how it started and everything. Let's do that. Love it. Let's do that. Because that would be a lot of fun. That would be that ton would of fun. That would be fun. And I, you know, I don't mind, I'm, I love interviewing and I love listening and I love connecting, but I have no problem talking a lot too. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's like. Where are you those, from? I'm from New Jersey. Oh yeah. I thought so. How do you, what do you mean? You guys always snip off your words. I'm from New Jersey. You snip off in, in a good way. It's not a, it's not a bad, I'm from. Wait, so tell me know. more. How? It's just, you know, Ital maybe it's Ital you're Italian, right? Are you Italian? No. Not the right. least bit, but I feel oh. 100%. Actually, oh, maybe 1%. Wait a minute. Meyer's German then, right? It's probably... German, I, the right? The story goes that my great-grandmother came from Austria-Hungary. Ah, that okay. That would make sense, too. Then. So all the borders were different back then. Yeah, the sure. Names. But yes, but I do feel yeah. 100%. Maybe not 100, but I feel at least 50% is how. So do you think everybody who lives in New Jersey ends up 
speaking kind of an Italian, an, a part of the Italian language or accent? No, I think there's something no. about, about me that, that it, it, I'm so drawn to it. And it was no. the kind of thing where when I am in Italy, traveling, visiting, whatever, I definitely feel like I'm home. These are my peeps. I, like, I love Italy. I had the yeah. most wonderful time in Italy. It's the, there's just something so, I don't know. I just feel so People walk there. arm in arm, man or yeah. man or woman and woman. It's a, it's, it's a, it's like family. Yes. It's like if you're a friend to somebody, you, you would walk arm in arm with them out of love. I think just a love. It's the amore. Eh? It is. But I think that's interesting that you said that too, because right, that's the thing that I, that I love also just in life. Like I love that human, that family, the connection. I love family. I'm close to my own family. So there probably, some of it might have to do with that, I guess. But Maybe it's just the East Coast vibe. You can pick it up, you know? Uh, so tell me, again, what am I cutting off? What are my words? Uh, I can't, I'm no good at this, but I just got it right away when you said I'm from New Jersey. You know, just um, like, what, what'd you say to me? No. You cut me off. No, I'm from New Jersey, I think. Oh, so I cut you off, you mean? Yeah. You, yes. and you cut off, I think you do when you, I don't know. I, we'll yeah. find out. I, yeah. I make I'm stuff also... up. You know, I was an expert before Google came around. <laughs> I was really smart about a lot of things. But I remember Google seeing came, a like... t-shirt once. There was a t-shirt hanging at one of these souvenir shops in like, I don't know what beach we were at years ago. And there was a shirt that said, I don't need Google. I've got a teenage son. Uh, you know? That's like, a great shirt. It was perfect. You could also um, make that same shirt. I don't need Google. I just asked my mom. Exactly. You no, know, or just ask Christine Vasquez. She knows everything. Okay, so Christine Vasquez. So you brought her up. I've got to go there with you. Yeah, let's do it. When I see and hear... Christine Baskets on TV. So I will talk about it in the intro. Everybody's going to know if they don't watch Baskets already or they didn't watch it. They can see it on Hulu now, right? I heard you say that. Yeah. Day. Yeah. So they can watch on Hulu and I strongly recommend it. But when I see Christine, I like put my hand to my heart when I'm watching. Like, oh, that's how that's much so it sweet. moves me. You move me oh, as Christine. That's so sweet. That means the world to me. And I can tell you. Chip. Chip. Stop it! Do the podcast. Anyone? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> more of that. More yeah. of that. Yeah, she's she's from. I do it sometimes. I used to do it in the airport all the time. You know, I'd be walking up the terminal, and go chip, and people would go because they know that was a big signature thing without even meaning for it to be in the show. I'm, you know, I come from a yelling family. So I know my mom would never yell, but I would yell for someone to, you know, come to me rather than me go to them. So, so I That's use that and it was a really good, it's unsettling when your mother calls out like that to you, especially when you're the Zach's character chip, it would be unsettling to you to have that. He was so tiny in so many ways with his, his acting that I was so big in the, in that and loud and obnoxious, but you know, but I was his mother, so I could get away with it. But I think it was hard for him as a character, probably. Definitely. Even though we never discussed that, he just was such a great actor. He, he taught me so much. So you didn't talk about the relationship between Christine and Chip at all? No, it no, just we happened. We just did it. We just did it. Well, you know, I would uh, I would talk to him as Christine on the set. I didn't talk to him as Louie. I wouldn't. I never asked. I told people, don't call me Louie. That's you can so call me Mama Baskets or Christine. But, you know, I wanted to leave Louie in the trailer, you know, with the, before I come onto the set. I didn't really want, you know, Christine was Christine, and I didn't want... You know, people always say to me, you played a woman. Like, you're a man playing a woman. I go, you know, I just was, I'm a woman playing a woman. I left the man out of my life. Wow. And you that were was so really, her. I was so hurt and still love. 
that character and what she gave me, I think, you know, even though I brought her to life, what she gave me was even more than I could have ever dreamed of. Like how so? What? Well, that is a character that I think people watch and forget it's me. I think they just forget Louis Anderson's in there. And that's the highest compliment, I would say. You, know, you forget it's an actor altogether, you, I think. You, you so think it's real. a real person. Yeah, you think it, it is a real person. And I think, and I know that you, you know, I've heard you before talk about how you've based her on your mom. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's so interesting. You, oh, I think one of the things I heard you say once was that I think a lot of people know a woman some way like Christine. Yeah. And it's, for me, I don't know somebody like Christine, but mm. she rings so true. Well, she must remind you of someone, though, and no, not necessarily, but maybe her heartstrings or whatever, her humanity you know what? or whatever. That's it. You know, I That's think it, it has to it has to be something that draws you. Yes, when she struggles, like, and you're talking about the how she can. She, I love when she calls Chip. All that is so good, and that's so part of her. But when I see her struggling, like I remember when she was trying to like better herself at a certain point, and she was in the oh. she went into the lake. Was it a lake? Oh. I think right. No, it was uh, it was the ocean. Was it the ocean? It was down okay. in Long Beach in a little bay, but it was really, it was such an emotional scene for me. I I was crying uh, before and after that scene because I knew what it meant. It was uh, amazing. The writers wrote an amazing scene, and it was night, and it was freezing, and they made me take my shoes off to walk in that ocean, and there were divers there in case anything happened. But still, it was just, it was a complete, it was an emotional scene. It was a very, very, I had it, you know, during several um scenes I, I would break down afterwards. So what would you do? You would break down like where? Would you go off to your trailer? No, or I just sat I would just no, I, mostly I would just sit uh after the scene. Like there if I think there might be a shot of it in the scene. I'm just sitting before I go in or standing. I'm crying in one of them. I'm crying uh so they just we did you. a few takes, you know. Uh, so it was just, you know, you know, I, I, the character is part of me and part of my mom, part of every person who struggles. So that's it. Then it's not that she's a familiar person I've seen, you know, at Walmart or something, which is where she yeah. exactly Costco, Costco, Costco. Come of on. course, Costco. Why no, did I, I say Walmart? I can't believe it. I can't believe oh, it. I cannot believe I said that. No, I don't. I'm, I'm teasing you. I go to, Martha I use Walmart all the time. I like, uh, I like, Martha, for God's sakes. Anyway, I'm on Really Famous. It's a podcast. Chip, I'm finally really famous, Chip. You're not. Anyway. Okay, so that is obviously going to go at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, that's a I would good thing, yeah. I love how you start your podcast, by the way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I love it. So, who did you listen to, by the way? I think I listened to I listened to Todd, which was really good. It was the first one up there, so. But the, what Todd said at the beginning, I go, oh, uh, that was good. And then I go, oh, he didn't even mention that while he was doing that. Uh, sound like you know you know that kind of stuff I got that whole why he said that how it, you know it must be hard for a lot of people who were so famous and then maybe not as famous anymore and it changes everything you know you're one there's a lot of there's a there was I mean I don't th do you think anyone was more famous than those guys were at one time well you I mean, know who I who I talked to who still is known for his character so much, who was probably more famous, um, Christopher Knight, who played Peter Brady. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's Peter but, Brady. Full but a different kind of family. Yes. I mean, Todd's, the layers in there of that family, right? Yes, With totally. 
to- you know, I thought, what yes. you're talking about, Willis. Yes. I mean, isn't that everybody said that at what time or said, you know, something like that, you know? Everybody knows who that is. I knows what that means. Everybody knows yeah. that phrase, I think, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, but a lot, lots of love to him and to his family and to what he's doing. It's lovely. Yeah. And then Dennis Quaid, because I've been watching um, Goliath, and Dennis is in Goliath. And he's fab, fabulous. But I love Goliath because I got to see, you know, I live in Vegas, so I got to see California and then Santa Monica, who, when you first, you're from Minnesota and you move to California, you want to you wanna go to Santa Monica and see those palm trees and that, yeah. You know, that whole beach mentality and and then the whole idea of Venice and all those things, you know, are beautiful. They're very, you know, they're perfect for actors. California is perfect for actors. Yeah. You know, you know, they really are. Actually, California is perfect for movie and TV stars. New York is perfect for Broadway and actors. You know, I hear exactly yeah. what you're saying. So, you know, I had a choice, you know, where I was going to go. Am I, was I from Minnesota? Was I going to New York to be a comic? Which I would have become a different, definitely a different comic. Or was I going to go to California? And I picked California because I grew up in Minnesota. I didn't want to be around snow anymore. Sure. Of course. I mean, when so. I came down from Lake Tahoe, because I stopped in Carson City to see my mom and dad, went up to Tahoe and then down through Sacramento when I hit the 101 and I saw palm trees on the freeways, I pulled over and called someone. I go, there's palm trees on the freeways. It's crazy. I know. Because I grew up in New Jersey. I know. Yeah. I so went you to know school that in feeling, Florida. Right? Yeah, right? I went to school in Florida for college. And then when I got there, I remember, this is kind of funny, actually, on the side of the highways, because they're called highways there, yeah. I would see these things and I would think, I thought they were alligators. This is a true story. I was 18 and I was like, That's oh my good. God, alligators. And then I realized they were just tires, you know, from like 18 wheelers. They stripped those from tires. <laughs> uh, from the That's a great story alligators. though. That's a great <laughs> thing in a movie. That would be great in a movie. You know what movie I saw totally off topic recently that I had never seen until now is Smokey and the Bandit. I saw it oh like God. a few weeks ago. It was on some channel and I was looking for like movies that I'd never seen. Like, oh, it's a great time to catch up on something like that. So I watched Smokey the Bandit and I have to tell you, it was like eye opening for me because I realized where Dukes of Hazard was born. Because I yeah, grew up sure. watching the Dukes of Hazard, and I didn't know that there was a movie called Smokey and the Bandit. It was basically Dukes of Hazard, and it was a ripoff of the movie. Yeah, well, which is a lot in television like that. And Jackie Gleason was in that, one of my idols. So. That's right. That's right. The I own, a, I own a set of his golf clubs, so I'm, like, thrilled to have those. So you're a collector. Yeah, I've always been a collector. My mom was a pack rat, so she gave – not a hoarder because we had aisles, so – um, but she was a pack rat and she collect things and all that nuance, that whole thing in, with the DeSanti water. That's how Christine remember it. And my mom would love that was right out of her, her vocabulary. Oh, look at, I could put this in a window, this color blue. Right. That's that right. was right out of my mom. That was right. So did you was, tell them then? Did you give them these lines? I had lived that stuff. Oh, I was just sitting there. Ad- we were ad libbing. The- Jonathan always let us. So I just started ad libbing. Same with the uh, curly fries thing. The all that, all that stuff on the couch. I always, I pretty much. There was a line to say, but I always tried to enhance it. So, did you think about it before when you were reading the script? It just came no. out in the moment when I saw you- the water. You were being in the her, blue bottle water, and I saw you like were... your blue cup, you know. Yeah, ah, that's so that makes sense because that's how yeah. it felt. It felt like it was just. It coming felt out real, of you. right? Yeah, yeah, like it was just coming out of you naturally. So how I mean, that Zach... was the gift that was given to me. So that was a gift, and Zach, you know, he just followed right. Sometimes my job, I was just trying to make him laugh, and the director, and Martha. So. I was being selfish. I needed to say something that they didn't expect because that's 
that's really good stuff. That seems real. And, and he's, he'd go right along with it, you know? So, and he wasn't, he just kind of went with it or whatever. I mean, he w- didn't emote that much, I guess, on screen anyway, yeah. when he was playing well, Chip. Yeah. Not remember, down. remember with the, was it Fudge? Where there was Fudge or something, I made Fudge. I don't remember the Fudge. And he, I go, why don't you have some Fudge? And he finally screamed at me, I don't want any fudge. You know, because I kept saying, why don't you have a nice piece of fudge? Because my mom would always say something was nice and inanimate. Why don't you have a beautiful, delicious piece of fudge? You know, my fudge is notorious. You know, that kind of stuff. So it was just fun. So, I mean, it sounds like fun. So Dale also... I Dale. Could never, Dale. I mean, it was all about all about Chip, you and Chip. But when Dale would come in, like I would definitely think those were two different, like two different actors too. I had people ask me on the road who plays Dale. Really? Mm-hmm. They really didn't know. They didn't know, and I go, "No, that's uh, Zach." Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that. But not wow. always. They not everybody knew. He was so good at it. Yeah, I mean, so the way he talked even was so different from the way yeah. Chip talked. Everything about it. He, it took him, you know, he had, we, so we'd shoot the scene where they were both in it, shoot it with Chip first, and then shoot it with Dale. And then you would watch how brilliant Zach was because he had set up something with Chip that he paid off with Dale. Uh, and you would just go, oh, my God, this guy is a genius. Wow. That's that very brilliant. Cool. Brilliant. So, so then how did that work then if he was playing off himself? Was there a stand in or somebody? Yes. There were two people who looked like one of, there were two different people. One looked like Chip and one looked like Dale. So wild. And that's how different they are. The, the stand in couldn't be the same for both. That is interesting. So that, to me, was like brilliant. Jonathan, what a great director he is. Portlandia, on and on. I can just go on and on. It is so funny. I saw, I checked out your your YouTube channel too. I didn't realize until um, this week that you had a YouTube channel. And you, I think you had I just have it, so no. Yeah, I have a very, it's kind of new, so. How do you like it? Uh, You know, like I always say, where does it live? What is it doing? Are people watching these? How do I get something? Do I do I get more something out of this? Is it right. good? All mistakes are forever on here. All flubs. But, you know, my interviews with Jonathan uh, and Martha and yeah. uh, Alex Morris, beautiful interviews. With, I'm getting ready to do it with all the writers coming up. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, because I mean, there's so many great writers on that show. And I really miss it. Like, I really, I was so sad when I learned that that was going to be it. It was going to, there was going to be no more, you know, like, I really, I feel like it needs to come back. Like, I, there's so much. Well, you know what? You? you could start that petition. I, I, I will start say. that petition. Because <laughs> we always, we wanted another season. We pitched it. And uh, I have to thank FX for keeping a show on that didn't probably make any money whatsoever. But it was good for the brand. It was good for the brand. No, but more than that, it was not just good for the brand, but it was good for that, for us, you know, that to be believed in. You know what I mean? That And that must attract other people to that brand. Do you know what I mean? The fact that, you know, they didn't even... I don't think they even told FX that I was going to be the mother. Why? Really? Why not? Well, until it was done. Until it was done. I don't think the FX saw it until it was all done. So they just greenlighted it and said, go ahead and do it and didn't interfere at all. And then. Not one bit. And then Jonathan and Zach just went to town or what? Mm-hmm. Jonathan, and so- Zach and Louie, you know, cause Louie was right. the person who called me on it. So. Wait, so Louis- Louis, Louis CK called you. On yeah. It. Yeah. And Jonathan was there and Zach was there when they called me. 
I think I remember you talking about this. So yeah. what was, I think they were looking for a Louis Anderson type or something. Was there something like that? Zach may, said the mother sounds like this. And he went, ah. And Louis said, that sounds like Louis Anderson. Should we just have Louis Anderson play the part? And I was thrilled. I, I, I've been waiting for that part my whole life. So, so you didn't feel, I didn't even all. know it. You weren't no, like cause I did my mom on stage all the time, you know, uh. I didn't know I was going to morph into a cross between my mom and all my sisters and my dad and everybody's in there. My whole cacophony of uh, life experiences. So you, obviously, your family was huge in yeah. terms of you growing up, your personality, your life, everything. Like, yes. Do you kind of feel like your family's always with you? Yes, because I try to celebrate them in all of my work. And I feel like they know that, that they are, I'm nothing without them. I'm, I'm, you know, I was 10th of 11 children. So that big boiling pot of stew of, you know, all those that came before me was just, I got to taste the best of all of it. And probably the worst of all of it in some ways. But still, I think that that was, you know, I always say that, I, you know, they had to go through all their stuff. And I think it's like an alchemy, you know, it, 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 it's just the right temperature. Do you ever taste that soup and you can never get it again? Yeah, you go, yeah. Oh, I wish you I had that why. soup. That lentil soup you made that one time in the 60s, is there any way you know where that recipe is, you know? Because the soup and the stew and all those things, that was sustenance. And so I look at families like that, a stir a big pot, you know? And probably what you think of with your family, you know, you're a part of, when I looked at, when I went in to try the clothes on for Christine, I picked out this stuff myself off the rack. It was all there. I mean, the, okay. you know, Amanda Needham, which we just did her, uh, she did Portlandia and she did baskets. And there's a woman who makes uh, miles ahead, which is a clothing brand, real clothes for real women. And she made all Christine's clothes. Oh, okay. And, um, and I just said, well, my mom or sister would wear that, that. Give me that big hat. Remember the hat in Easter in Bakersfield? Of course. I said, give me that hat. That's going to be a big deal. When we, when I, and I put that hat on and I went, oh, my God, this is it. This hat is it. This is it. I remember, I mean, I remember, I'm picturing you sitting at, at like the kitchen table with all the other women, like your friends. Yes. would get together. Yeah. And I think you must have been wearing something and – they were commenting it on or something. Or maybe was that when you were going to be on TV, right? When Christine was going to be on TV, maybe because of the rodeo. Well, there's a couple times. Uh, they always complimented me and then would slash me across the throat. That's right. You know, that's it. So when I was playing cards, but then, yes, when I made the, my own outfit for the, the road at the rodeo, <laughs> that, I had a wedding dress that I redid and put that big right. buckle on it and the hat. I didn't do it. Somebody else made that. And that was like, so you, you couldn't, uh, I mean, that's genius. That wardrobe genius. stuff. And I, when I saw it, I went, Oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And those clothes that, that, Mar that, uh, Christine wore were so Christine. They were so yes. Her. I wanted to do a line at, with uh, Miles Ahead and uh, Amanda for Costco, the Christine Baskets collection. But, you know, it's so hard to get people behind that kind of thing. And <sighs> what does it mean? Is it cross-dress? What does it mean for people? But I think, boy, I think my mom would love to have outfits like that and stuff like that. My mom would have really sure. enjoyed having those beautiful drapey, big girl things for a big girl, which now is much more prevalent, thank God. Yeah. 
you know, but, but um, how was your mom? Like when you were growing up, like, how did you see your mom? Who was she to you? I know it's a big question. Yeah, it is. I just saw her as uh actually I saw her as a, a, you know, she was kind of could have been an actress herself. She was a little dramatic and she loved everything and loved everyone. And if she disapproved, she would just go like Christine. She'd do that thing with her eye. and uh, But she never hardly ever tore anyone down. And I think what she really was, she was like a armor between her, my dad and us. She was in between. She took all the, she took, you know, how they put a, you know, a tank out in front. And then they're going to shoot at it. And my dad was the shooter. And he was an abuser. So he was cruel to her. But she never allowed him at least in my growing up get to my I think my younger my older brothers took a lot of abuse from my dad but my mom didn't uh didn't allow it and I think it was really I just had admired that she could be that strong so she was like she was a rock that felt like when you laid on it, it was like a pillow that's a great description yeah because that's what it was yeah you know? the best of both yeah best. she was that uh, yeah oh this isn't hard at all this is soft right yeah. so you felt she like was she everything was... she needed to be that's really too what it was everything she needed to be and do you think all of your brothers and sisters felt the same way yeah i think so i mean as you know in my book my mom gave up one of her daughters uh to her sister who couldn't have children mm -hmm. because she had a baby back to back. My brother and my sister were born one year apart to the day. So, you know, she was trying to do good. And then my dad wouldn't let them adopt her. And it was just horrible, horrible stuff long before I, I had any idea of it. And I always feel that my sister really hurt my sister a lot. And, um, but I don't, th I think my mom's intentions were good. I mean, she had 11 children, so she was trying to do something nice for her sister. Give her sister a daughter. But it was the wrong, you know, just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't have, I, I wish it's one of the questions in the book. I wish I would have got a real answer. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, I, I don't really deserve that answer. That's that she needed to do what she did. And, you know, I, I, for, I forgive her for anything she could have done. So, yeah. Well, with all of the, you know, the problems or all the struggles, it is interesting to me that your family still kind of stuck together in terms of. Well, you know. know Here's the thing. Yeah, we're all very close. Um, here's the thing. Even though my dad was a miserable, alcoholic, and abusive person, he never left. So in some weird way, it's like you're con what would have happened if my mom would have left? Was there a person that would be just as bad or not? You know, like, you know, families are such a strong system that if you try to disrupt it, they will not allow it. They do not like that idea that you're going to disrupt it yeah. under any circumstances. And, you know, I think it was a lot of pain and a lot of hardship and hard on my sisters. And, you know, my mom was more stick with it. Maybe he'll turn into a nicer person. And, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's a different time back then. It was a different time. Yeah. And I do think that it has happened in many families where maybe I'm not saying like, she, you know, she sh you know, should have stayed or not. I'm not saying either way. You're feeding back, by the way, on uh, or I am. Oh, really? A little bit. You come in closer, I think. Then you're getting feedback? I don't know. Maybe it's me that's getting am it. Am I, I still? Know. I'm, you, I'm am not I still? Sure. I just hear an echo in there. Uh, you hear it? How am I now? 
I'm right well, at my it's microphone. something like maybe it's. Let me see if it's me. Hold on. Hmm. Because I hear you, it. You don't hear that. Is it? What does it sound like? Does it sound like feedback, or does it sound like something going on? It feels like reverb. The, it sounds like okay. reverb, or maybe something I, going on. You got something there's a going on. There's a landscaper outside of my. Oh, that's what it is, probably. Do you? Is that what it what it sounds like though? Because it's not at it my house. It sounds like. Wah, 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 wah. Is that it? Let me do something. I'm gonna hold close, on. Let me. Uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Curtain. Do your thing. It's across the street. And I'm going to close my curtain. So is he like digging? Is he like, is it digging? Is he grading stuff? Like, I hear, it's he's better. Like, it's better. That's it. Because it, it just got better outside. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Well, we'll that just, was it. I just wanted you to know what it was. So how's my, how's, since I closed the curtains, how is my lighting? Does it look different? It looks just as beautiful. Actually, nice. it's better lighting now. Is it? Yeah. Because, you know, you're vibrant against... The brown, is it brown? They're brown, right? Yes. The curtains, they're pretty. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, okay, good to know, because I'm seeing yeah. all of you. I don't want to, I'm up in the corner, but I see all of you on my screen, and I much prefer it that way. So yeah, Whatever you want. Yeah, so as boss. long as you, let me ask you a question. Help me test something, will you? We're yeah. right in the middle. This, this yeah, is, let's do it. I feel like Leave this friends. in, too. Leave okay. this in, because it's interesting. Okay. And, yeah, you know, you are it. so right. These yeah, are the things that people that, will mention to you forever. You're absolutely right. So let me test this. I'm going into this different view. Did anything change on your end? Did you just do it? I just did it. Oh, I didn't do it Nothing. again. Now do it back. Okay. Cause I'm doing the, I went what from if, speaker view to the gallery view and sometimes the tape, like what it records for me, yeah. it goes to whoever's speaking and that's who I see. And then other times it has both of us. Well, what do you want? Well, I think, well, you really want to keep, want me to give away all my secrets? I will. Yeah. I trust you. Well, yeah, you can. I'm not going to. I know. Go ahead. I won't remember. And I'll leave anyway, it in. So, yeah. Okay. okay so Go ahead. What is your my, secret? No, my secret. Well, okay. It is a little bit of a secret. So I think the better thing is to have both of us so that we have the ability to go from person to person. And I agree. Can, right. So it's so much better. I agree. Better. Is it both of us now? I or has that well, always been? It has. I think we are. It's catching both of us the whole time. Yeah. But, see, I can see me up at top, a small me, and mostly you. Same for me, and I like yes. it like that. When yeah. certain times I've done it the other way, where I see both of us equally, yeah. just to make sure that I'm getting that view. But I think it's going to catch this view no matter what. And you know, this room has a lot of good, less bouncy stuff. And since you close the curtains, your sound is better. Uh, okay, so I will so, keep doing that at your yeah, advice or, in the future. You know, yeah, or just, you know, sit, yeah. But also, so here's my secret, though, that I didn't reveal yet. It's oh. that if I, if I am doing an extra interview with somebody, and it's usually just a YouTube video, because to get on the podcast and do the YouTube, you know, you have to be famous, and, and I have to be excited about talking to you like I am yeah. with you. <laughs> but sometimes somebody will pitch me a person, and, you know, I won't do the a whole podcast with them, but I'll do maybe a 10-minute video, and I'll put it on the YouTube channel. That's In smart. a case like that, I would prefer the other way, where the Zoom decides who's talking and who's not, because it cuts the editing time down. Yeah, that sense? well, that's what you should do. You should do what's best for you. So that's my secret. Yeah, I, I would just do that. Yeah, I would do whatever makes it. And I'm going to pitch you somebody because I just, uh, I've been working out with a trainer in the pool and he told me about this person he heard on Joe Rogan's podcast um, who has a book called Breathe. Do you know about it? Breathe? What breathe. is that? Who who is and it? the name is, let me just be a good person, James Nestor. This book, I listened to three hours of it last night on Audible. It changed my life already. I just want you to get in, get that book if you can. I will get the book for sure. And if you can have him on, it, it will help people who are, it's just, he did such research and 
I mean, breathing. He changed the way I breathe. I have been breathing different since I listened to the three hours last night. Okay, so it is literally about breathing. It's all. It's about breathing less. In fact, it's okay. amazing. I know that sounds crazy. You got to listen to the book. I will listen. I to would it. get it on audio because he reads it. Okay. You can I, still do work around the house unless you don't like audio. I have to say, I obviously love podcasts and I listen to them all the time. But the weird thing for me is I usually don't like audio books. I like to read a book. I'll read oh, it on my you phone. Read it. Or I'll, then you should read it. I do yeah. like to read it, but it's weird. I find that um, not everybody can read their writing naturally. And I think that's why I love podcasts because he they did, are though. natural. I mean, for me, at f from 5 to 8.30 last night, for me to sit and listen to a podcast, I mean, a book, yeah. an audio book. Good stuff. That's good stuff. It changed okay. my life. I've already told uh, 10 people about it. <laughs> to everybody I talk to, I go, you got to get this book. You have anybody with asthma? You have anybody with breathing problems? You have anybody with a weight problem? You have anybody with any problems? Okay. It probably has to do with the breathing and their breath. And Interesting. How so breathing. you already told 10 people since yes. last night. How many yes. people do you talk to on a daily basis? Well, not a, you know, I text with somebody or, well, I have a friend who has asthma. So I reached out to him because mm -hmm. I said, listen, you're going to drive to California from here, get that book and listen to it. It'll, it could change. It could cure your asthma. Wait, it's somebody with asthma of, is driving to California from far away right now. Uh, they're going to this week. Yeah. Cause the numbers are a little high in California. I know, but they're, they, they're going to a remote place. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I would have said the same thing, but you know what I stopped doing? trying to control stuff mm. like what people are doing. They've already made up their mind. Why do I need to throw a, a wrench in it? There are people who are in their sixties. If they don't know what's scary, I'm they're They're not stupid. So I can't, if they are still alive, they're still doing okay. Then they must be being careful. So what did you, you know, used to tell people what to do a lot? Well, I would just, you know, I'd have to get involved because that's my mom, you know. Well, you know what I heard? You should be careful because what is, you know, that's Christine. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard that it was a mess over there and I just don't want anyone. I don't want you over there. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But that's not all she's going to say about it. She's going right. to, did you go over there? Did I tell you it was a mess? See, no one listens to me. But that's how you are too, your work. Not, no, I, I, I try not to be that way. Okay. Because you know what? I don't have any control over what people are going to do. Right. You know, you grow up in a family like mine, you think you have some control, but you really have none. I would think you would feel like you had no control growing up in a family like yours, so big. Well, I have big ego and I thought I had some sort of control. I'm a comedian. We think we're in charge of the world. Don't you think comedians, uh, I think they're know-it-alls. Do you think? Well, you know them better I mean, than I do. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, like I think that doing a podcast, you're a know-it-all. Because you think you can sit and talk to people and make it interesting. That's a high, high and mighty thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just who I am. I'm a, my mother, my father was an entertainer and my mother should have been. And so what am, what was my, you know, I, 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 when I say things, people would laugh and I go, oh, I should probably try this comedy. I mean, you seem so like relaxed about the whole thing. I am. That you are. But is that because you've been. I get anxious and have a lot of fear and anxiety because I grew up in that abusive household. So I have all that at all times, but I've worked really hard and through a lot of therapy, you know, I, you know, what I always say is all the worry in the whole world cannot prolong your life one second. So why give it any gravitas? Every prayer of every read says, let go. Every book, every yogi, every person <laughs> says, let go. Let go, let God, let go of things, let, you know, don't worry about tomorrow, just stick with the day, you know? And so yeah. I think that stuff rubs off on you. I'm not saying I can always do it. 
Right. But you just said that you have, that you feel like anxious all the time. It's with you all the time. But I mean, don't... yeah, I'm so sensitive. Like when I watch the news and I see the tragedies and the stuff like that, I go, I somehow, I think when you grow up in an alcoholic family, you feel responsible for the alcoholic somewhere as a kid. Yeah. You yeah. just do. Which of it's course is normal. faulty thinking, but it's very normal. It's, well, it's just it's that, typical. well, I wonder if it's me. One day you just said, I wonder if it's me. I wish I was, maybe I should be a better child. Anyway, so I think, I think I do that, but I think I dismiss it almost immediately now. I think I go, oh, you're crazy, Louie. That's very good to get yeah. to that point, to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, only 67 years. <laughs> Did therapy do it a lot? Is that a lot of Yeah, it? and life. Because, you know, if you have life and you're always worried and nothing manifests of that worry, then you yeah. realize, what are you worried about? Right. But not everybody does that naturally. Like it's. I don't think I do it naturally. I think I just am that kind of person who's more internal and on my external, I look really calm. You do look so, very calm externally. Yeah, because I think calming is what's good for people. And so I'm a caretaker. So I oh. want people to feel comfortable. And that is really powerful because, right, you definitely give that vibe off. Like even the second I saw you on the screen and we started talking, totally relaxed and natural. Right. You, I would have been works. a good therapist. I would have been a really good therapist because I'm not out to, I'm, I'm not out to hurt anyone. You I'm know, I to, was a therapist. I'm, oh, I don't, I didn't know that. I was. But, you know, um, Dennis Quaid said you, your thing was like therapy for him. That's I, I was a therapist. I'm just always so interested in the actual experience and like what you real what you're really feeling and thinking and going through. And I always like you, I want everybody on the other end of me to feel at ease. Yeah. And well, see. that's why you're you're really good at what you do because this is a conversation we're having. You don't have a overwhelming agenda mm -hmm. and I am completely relaxed and comfortable and I love you know I felt it right right away like we you and I would know each other in life if we were you know yes well we do now we're friends yes. for life now how about this though isn't this a good setup I always wanted to be Madonna so no, <laughs> I have to say um, your sound is very good it are they are good yeah 39 so I bucks 39 I'm bucks so you know 39 dollars Amazon. Bucks for the headset? I'll send you the link. Oh, but aren't I they have, fantastic? They really are. So for me, I don't, I don't like to wear headphones. Like personally, when I'm recording in person, which is what I used to always do. So yeah. before all this, um, I would never want to put headphones on because yeah. it takes me away from feeling that I'm there. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the things I had to get used to with the Zoom, with the remote right. interviews. But uh, I like that it's an all-in-one situation. Well, you, I, you know, I was wearing the iPods, and my iPods broke, by the way. But I don't know, or there's something wrong that I can't seem to fix. But they're still there. They still have a green light, but they These? don't work. Yeah. I, those are the new ones. I have. Is that the old ones or the new ones? These are new, and I had yeah. to get the since you know we're the one just that goes like in this. your ear, right? It goes in, and this so these are AirPods Pro. So I had to get the Pro, which are more expensive, ridiculously, only because the regular Apple earbuds don't fit in my ears; like they hurt. Oh, so that's a lot of the, people have that. Yeah. So the Pro are now is they the only fit one. perfectly in my ear. They do the old ones, yeah, and oh. I like them. And FX gave me a pair that say fearless on them oh. that say fearless. So it makes, you know, made me happy. Um, so the reason I did it is because, you know, when you do record, this connection is much better for you. Whoever edits this, if it's you that I have these on, this is, this is what you should want anybody you're interviewing to wear. Right. So you knew that and that's why yeah, you did it. Because I do podcasts. So yeah, I ordered them. I go, listen, I'm just going to get these. I asked a friend who knows about headphones. I saw these. I go, here's one, 39 bucks. I'm my mother. 39. Why should I pay 89? Right. At 39, I got them. I even bought a person that worked with me. I got them a pair. 
after I got them and I tried them, I go, I'm sending you a pair because that's who my mom was too. A very giving person. And it's amazing how surprised people are that you might send them a gift. That's interesting. Yes. It's always amazing to me. We should be sending each other gifts at all times. Right. Right. You know, I also like the gift that's for no reason except that the person was like, like you're doing. But to yeah. me, the gift giving at a certain occasion actually stresses me out a little because I always oh. feel like I don't know what the other person's really going to like. And it could be somebody super close to me. But yeah. I was like, I don't really know. I don't well, really you're not know. looking at that person then. That, but look I at am. all the That's things the that, but look at the things that they like. Like if my friend is, is doing lots of work on podcasts and radio and stuff. So he's going to like these. Yes. But right? I think you have to think about it. It's more natural when you're thinking about it during the year, let's say, you know, instead of at Christmas or birthday or something like that, right? Because then you have to suddenly be like, well, what? Yeah, but I know what you're saying. Like, well, then how am I just, even tuned in? That's yeah, really you, what but it sounds are like. You of all people. Right. Should know what I'm not tuned in. Yeah. Like, I think I'm also not a stuff person. I'm not a stuff. A, you know what I mean? Like, And I'm you not should a, give them something you would like that it made you happy and you should give it to them. I really enjoyed this. I thought you might like it too. So they know what your intentions were of giving mm -hmm. them the mud pack treatment that, or whatever it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Something Italian, something yeah. from Italy. Well, no, I did. Yeah, you could. Well, I have a cup from Italy that my friends brought me. You know, I remember going to Italy and going to the place where they make the tiles all the beautiful tiles and oh, buying, I didn't do that. buying like a few boxes of beautiful Italian tiles. I still have that. I never in the box. put up. I probably still have them in the box. So you're outside of Vegas now, right? Is that where you live outside yeah. of Vegas? Mm -hmm. So how did you land there and what do you, how does it feel? Well, uh, 12 years ago, they called uh, my friend Adam Stack, who has spy entertainment who did, um, uh, lots of different shows here. He's involved in all, you know, like lots, tons of shows. Um, and he said, do you want to do a show in Vegas? And I said, oh, yeah. I think my manager at the time also was instrumental in that, but he wanted me to do a show. So I moved here 12 years ago and did a show at the Excalibur for six years and then one at the palace station for three years. And then the Plaza hotel I did for one year. And that's when I got the Christine job. And so I stopped and just did that. I'm probably wrong on about the years, but it doesn't matter. But, um, so, and then in 1984, you know, I've been working in Vegas, you know, actors go to New York, Movie stars go to L.A. and comedians. Vegas is their true home because the headline in Vegas with your name and headlining, that's the ultimate thing for a comedian. That's Lenny Bruce. Right. You know, that's Buddy Hackett. That's uh -huh. Don Rickles. That's Johnny Carson who worked down the street at the Sahara. Bob, you know, all those comedians. And so when you're a comedian, Rodney and all those people. I was just going to say, what about Rodney? Yeah, Jackson? Rodney. Yeah, we were good friends always. Yeah, You were? And in, in when I lived in Minnesota, we had a little club called Mickey Finn's. And so Rodney was coming and Jeff Gerbino, who's a comedian, who kind of started that club or was one of their founding members, said we should go see Rodney. And I go, yeah. I said, we should get some balloons, which they thought was silly, but very Minnesotan. And then I heard that Rodney liked scotch. So I went to the liquor store and got a bottle of Glenn Levitt scotch and I brought it. And he was so touched by the fact that I brought him that scotch. He brought it up till the day he died to people. I remember when Louis, hey kid, how are you? you know? um, and he and I stayed friends and I'm still friends with his widow. And, uh, you know, he was a uh, beautiful, I always hugged him. He was not really thrilled about my big hugs all the time, but he you know, Rodney like probably wasn't. Really? No, he, you know, he just like, 
you know, it comes from a different era where men probably don't hug people uh, as much, uh-huh. you know. But I always gave him a big hug and told him I loved him. And uh, yeah, don't you though? But um, <laughs> you know that kind of thing. He was just a lovely. I I saw through. You know, I grew up with an alcoholic father, so yeah, I so saw a person. It. I could see the difficulty he had with it, and so. Right, so he was very it. depressed, right? Depressed. Uh, I mean, that was part of his character in a lot of oh, ways. Oh, really? Because I, yeah, had, I mean, know, younger, but I think he was in a maybe. I mean, comedians are at any moment could go there because that's the stew we sit in. Uh huh. But you know, the stew's only this deep, so you could choose to get out of it if you want by standing up. Okay. So I I heard that from a therapist once. Well, you know, you're laying in about a foot of water, if that. So you could just get up. That get out is of that water. brilliant. That's and I brilliant. said, and that always resonated with me that I was choosing to be in that self pity, uh, depressed state. I mean, mostly I just want, you know, I, I have so much joy. I couldn't be any happier and more grateful. I'm humbled by everything that's going on for me and still is after 42 years. That's, look, not a lot of right? people would feel like that, but yes, yeah, of course, I mean, right. why? Why wouldn't they feel like that? You know, Regis filled and just, you know, Regis just died. Yeah. A lovely person, lived it up. Had it going. Yes, he was troubled and tortured and all those things he did on the shows, you know, that were entertaining. But he was so funny. I remember him on Joy Bishop way back. He was a sidekick on Joy Bishop. Regis was always entertaining and he lived his life so full. Now, I don't know. I didn't spend a lot of time with Regis, but I loved him and I loved who he was and I loved what he brought people every morning. Mm-hmm. On that show, I used to love to watch Regis go on a tirade and then go, well, and that's what happened. You know, <laughs> go Notre Dame, he would say, or something like that. Um, and so, so you can live like that. You, you can I, choose I am like living that. like that. I am yeah. choosing to stay out of that um, self-pity pot, that slippery slope, that slimy pit, you know, because who am I? to complain about anything. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're okay. living a good life. You've had it. You've gotten everywhere and more than you ever would have dreamed about, right? And like, my well, best stuff is yet to come. You believe that? I believe it. I believe it too. Yeah. I believe it like, about you. I believe it yes. about me. I believe it should be about everybody. Listen, this hour has it blown by. Am I right? Right? I'm just saying, this has been, like, we just started talking. Yes. Yes. Because we are riding the joy of life. Right. Yes. And we are surfing above, dipping in below, but we are going somewhere. We're Zooming, literally. That's right. And we we're having a ball. You know, um, I just can't. I, I, I've, I'd be ashamed of myself during this especially during this pandemic to be complaining about one thing. There's so many people in need out there. Yeah. Um, You know, we could do, you and I could do another podcast just about what we could do to help people during this time, you know? Yeah. Um, You know, one of the best gifts you could give somebody is, especially nowadays, um, food bank thing in their name you know there's people that have never gone to a food bank before in their entire life you know we used to go to food banks all the time growing up and churches and different organizations would bring us food especially at holidays and i always thought what a nice thing that these people who don't know us brought us to make sure that we had a nice thanksgiving yeah yeah Right. And right? it makes such a difference. It's not like meaningless. Are you kidding it's me? totally meaningful. Yes. It was yeah. very meaningful to have an extra turkey for 11 yeah. kids and to have, you know, just. But see, isn't it know? interesting though? Because you didn't grow up feeling sorry for yourself. Well, you know a little I mean? bit probably with an alcoholic father, a little bit, but you're right. But we didn't, we didn't dwell on the fact we were poor. 
Right. We we right. said, how can we get a few bucks to, you know, get some uh, French vanilla ice cream and some root beer? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but feeling sorry for yourself, maybe you said maybe a little bit, but is it feeling sorry for yourself when you're really just struggling with the conditions that you're in? I don't know that you really would define it as feeling sorry for yourself even. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think yes, yes and no. But we did. I think I did. I think I did feel sorry okay. for myself. Well, because at I had this mother who had a merry-go-round going around her. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was j- pure joy, pure hope. You know, my dad quit drinking when he was 69. She turned to me and said, I told you he'd quit. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's a hopeful person. <laughs> yes. That's a yes. hopeful person. So you think you're that passed down. It's, and is it's it, in my genes, I think. Is it I think in your genes, in genes or is it because of the environment that she, you know, or what she passed on to you? Yeah, in- definitely. It's definitely because of her. Mm-hmm. But maybe How both. Can I, yeah. I think both. You know, I can be like, like my dad in a second if things. Oh, I don't mean both, like meaning you're like both of them, but I'm oh. meaning that it's in your genes. It's part of who she was. Don't from you the think beginning. it's more complicated than one or the other? Yeah, that's what I said. It's definitely, both. but definitely it's because of her. Yes. You know, if you witness joy in a person for 77 years, you are going to. You're going to take a pocket full of that joy, aren't you? Totally. So, he, and, and this is why and I can scoop into that pocket at any time I want. Right. I can find the good in the worst situations. What I a guarantee gift. you. Well, I'm hopeful. Do you? We think have she, to be hopeful right now, especially. Definitely. Do you think? And she people have was to able, vote. People do have to vote. Let's you know. interrupt this program yeah. for this very important message. Well, just because th- this is important on so many levels. I don't care who you vote for either. You just have to vote. That's the most important thing, everybody. So anyways, but you were saying, I'm sorry I, I saying, interrupted that because that oh, was a please. beautiful thing you had going. Um, here's what I wanted to know. Is, do you think your mom knew that she gave you those things? Like, do you think she saw in you and reflected it all and said, reflected on it and said to herself, this is good. I, whatever I want, I, I passed it on to Louie. She must have, huh? I think so. Cause I, you know, she must have, she must have, I think she was a bright sparkling light. And I don't, I don't know that she had any control of that. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know how when somebody's hit with a magic wand and they just start sparkling, uh-huh. you know, in those, in the cartoons and fairy tales and all that stuff and the, in the uh, Wizard of Oz and all that. Yeah. You know, my mom had an aura, her name was Aura, but she had an aura around her that was, must have been seen by me, you know, yeah. I wish I, you know, I wish I knew the answers, but I don't need to know them to live that life. Definitely. You don't have to have the answer. No. To live no. a great life. Am mm-hmm. I right? Totally. Yeah. To- so, yes. It took me an hour and 10 minutes to get you to say totally. No, I'm sad it no, before. No, I know, sure. I know. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I would say it you know, more I have often. Five than... sis- I have five sisters, so I tease. I'm a good teaser. <laughs> I like being teased. That's. I have a yeah. much smaller family than you, but that's yeah. what we do too. And uh, it's part of it. It's the fun of life. So I yeah. like to be teased too. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is your goal in every podcast? To get to know the person I'm talking to. That's really... That's... The, get to know the person. That's that's it. So you we're know, like halfway there, right? <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work a little harder. I think we could do another podcast, though. Quite honestly, D- think, I think this I'm is sure. part one. Let's do a part two. We can, and we then can, I could just yeah, I can tell you how I moved to California and all that kind of stuff that I think will be helpful to people with their careers. 
because I do think that people need help with their careers, especially now. Don't, I'll say one thing to people. Yeah. Don't give up. Stay in the line or the queue or whatever you want to call it to get on the ride of show business or music or whatever you're doing. Stay in the queue. Mm -hmm. Don't get out of the queue. Because in the queue, you might meet somebody or you might see somebody or you might see something or you might experience yourself or your legs and your stamina and your heart and your soul get stronger. That is beautiful <laughs> advice. And t from you, then they need to know, whoever's listening, you know, this is advice from Louis Anderson. So he knows what's what, right? So I mean, at, si at 61, I got my dream part of a lifetime. Yes. So, yes. and, and I always was, knew um, I would. Staying in line. Well, you, were, you weren't in line. You're not in line I anymore. was in line because I was in line because I hadn't got the acting part I wanted. So I wasn't taken seriously. I wasn't, I always talked to my agents about getting me a great acting part. And they never did. They never did it. Did they and try, do you think? I think I was part of the problem. How? I wasn't doing work enough. I wasn't being, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy who might wait around for, for the people who work for me instead of being more bombastic, you know. Got it. People who are more bombastic. But Joan Rivers told me once, get rid of your management and agents every four years because they start taking you for granted. And I thought, wow, that's a really fascinating experience. Line. I read one of her books like a couple of months ago, randomly. I don't know why. You were good I, friends I, too. You were. She was, yeah. I, I have to tell you, I didn't, you know, like I didn't follow her that closely when, when she was alive, but um, I went back to her book and I was like, hey, she's, she's like a, she's a kick-ass woman right here. She's a pioneer. Yeah. And uh, she just I've didn't, people it. didn't like what she had to say. Joan Rivers was way ahead of her time because right now she'd be right on point. Truth. Maybe not with all the, you know, taking shots at people, but it was always truth in the taking shots. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but she said, Melissa, but I interrupted her daughter's you. a lovely person too, but. Okay. She said that to me, get rid of your agents every four years or two years or something because they start taking you for granted. And, but you didn't do that or did you? I didn't usually. You didn't. Until no, not, I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So are they still the same guys or no. women? No. So at some point you stop. You yeah, change. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you're a, you have to, you can't expect um, people to work for you if you don't give them something to sell. If their job is to sell stuff and to get you jobs, you better provide them with exactly what you want and how you want it and when you want it. But interestingly, your best role did not come from an agent. It came from somebody who knew you personally. Almost all my work came from that. We could go over that the next time. All right, let's I, do it. I'm going to put just a have a two thirty. I have a yeah. two thirty phone call, but um, we could have talked for two more hours. Let's do part two. We'll plan part two, and I'll yeah. have something to look forward to. And, part two uh, with Lou. We'll talk part two with Lou. We'll talk about your move to California, all the other comedians. What did we just say? All, all your jobs that came from friends. Yeah. We'll touch on all that next and, time. Yeah. And e even if we don't do it. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> there it is. No, 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 no. Who's that? No. Who says that? Your mom? No, no, no. No, is that it's your not own mom. thing? Is that your own thing? No, no, no. Did some teacher, did some coach? Did, you know what? No, it's no, my no. dad. It's my it's dad. dad. No, no, no. We're going to do that right now. huh? Props to your dad. I think what, he wouldn't say we're going to do that right now. He'd say, no, no, no. That's not the right thing to do. That's, that's not right. Yeah. That's, I think that's who it's from. And we could do mom and dad isms next time too. Then. Well, let's do that too. I'll write it down. Let's do all that. And I want to get you off in time for your... For your I'm 2.30. A, I, yeah, I mean, I gotta, I'm going to be okay, but um, do I have to wait another whole year? Time, the whole time, uh, I don't, I was saying, is it Kara or Kara? Kara. It's Kara. And I'll and, tell, yeah. And it, but I think it's people's biggest fear when they're talking to you. Is it Kara really? or Kara? Oh. So you should do in the first person. 
uh, me being Kara or whatever it is that you need to do at the beginning of okay. that podcast. I'll do that. You know, it's funny because at the end I do it. Here's what I tell everybody at the end, or I ask everybody, I say, will you do me this one favor before we end just to do a little testimonial that I can put on social media. So I say, Ooh. yeah. Okay. So, so I say, so you're going to say this, I'm just going to do it like I would normally. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah. going to say, hi, this is Louie Anderson. I just talked to Kara. And then you say anything you want. That's okay. what I, so All I right. say it at the end, but I hear what you're saying. I'm going to take yeah. that advice. Yeah. Why not? The beginning. Yeah. So that everybody knows. Always. Yes. I don't. And it's funny because you say this, because I'm always curious about what it's like for you on the other end. And I always, since I want you to be comfortable and whatever, mm -hmm. I want to remove anything that would make you uncomfortable. So you just gave me a big helpful tip that I will oh, use. Good. I need to tell everybody how to pronounce my name from the beginning. So I just got done talking to Kara. Yes. I just right? finished talking to want? Kara. I just talked okay. to Kara, whatever, anything like that. I got like you. That. I got it. I got it. Ready? You're going to do it? Yeah. All right. Look at the camera. Duh. How about if I just look right here? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hi, Louis Anderson here. I just got done talking to Kara. Kara? Kara is a Kara? No. It's Kara, right? Think of it this way. It's you care about me. Okay, care. got it. I got it. But that will be funny if you put that on, you know. Of course that will be funny. Yeah. Um, hi, I just got done talking to Kara. I'm really famous. Finally. Please listen to our podcast. We did an hour and plus, and we're going to do part two. You got to hear it. It's so much fun. It was so real. It was so genuine. And uh, it was so lovely, like her. Excellent. Thank you. I should Thank do you. promos. I should do promos. I love you and I can't wait. You got my number. You know my number. Same. I'm going to send at, you. Who's that? Who's that? Who's what? Behind you. Who's that? He's oh, got that's pee. Stella. Does he have to pee? Or she have to pee? She does not. She was circling. She just wants to, she just wants to lay down on the I rug. I like how she circles the rug and then lays down like, okay, this will be it. Yeah. She, she looks so pretty. Time. Oh, she's so pretty. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to send you a mug, too, so you have to give me your address. Okay, I will. I'll Texas send it to you. Yeah, I'll send okay. it to you. Okay. Louie, this was so great. It was even better than I thought it would be. Thanks for uh, being persistent. Thank you for not wanting to just oh, shut me out. What happened? I just, did I get did zoomed me? out? Did you I just? You, no? Do you hear me? No, I hear you, but I don't see anything. Oh, that's so weird. I don't know what oh, happened. Oh, it doesn't. It don't matter. Okay, well, All we're right, going to end. yeah. Love you. Bye. Bye. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh, oh. How did that happen? Well, it was probably me because I'm so. No, silly. it's me. I touched something weird. I've never done it. I'm learning so much about Zoom through you. Hey. Right, I'm going to end it now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Louis Anderson, you guys, my dream guest before I landed him on the show and even more now that he's been on the show. Pick up a premium Really Famous mug at reallyfamouspodcast.com slash mugshots. And while you're there, check out my website. It's newly revamped. And if you have suggestions, contact me through the email listed on the site. Oh, one more thing, Jim Gaffigan. I recently did a video with him for just my YouTube channel. It may have gotten lost in the shuffle and I think you'll enjoy it because as always, I look beyond the funny to get to the real person. We end up talking about him being in therapy and how he deals with the ups and downs in his career. And yet, it's also very funny. Backstory, it's my second time talking with Jim. I wrote a piece about him for the New York Times in 2013. To watch our talk, because it's not running as a podcast, remember, just a video, go to youtube.com slash really famous. I'm Kara. I'm happy to have you here. See you next time. Why don't you have some fudge? Why don't you have a nice piece of fudge? Why don't you have a beautiful, delicious piece of fudge? It's, you know, my fudge is notorious. Happy birthday, Kara. I care for you. It's Louie Anderson. 
All right, it's Kara's birthday. She's so sweet. It's Kara's birthday. She loves the sun and not the street. She loves the beach. She loves the waves. She loves the sandy beach. Happy birthday, Kara. I love you a lot, Louie. All right, Kara's birthday. She's really famous. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's the name of it. Really famous. That's her podcast. Who I, I was on it twice. Then I've never heard from her again, really. All right. Good going, Kara.